Welcome back students to another semester of Esterbrook University. In previous uh, videos we talked about the Esterbrook Model J which was a very standard pen that Esterbrook made for many many years. There's actually two variants of that and the two variants are what we're going to talk about today. So this is a standard Esterbrook Model J pen. If we pull a ruler out here we will see that the length of this pen from tip of the jewel to the tip of the jewel is basically exactly five inches. The Model LJ or long Model J is a thinner pen but it is a tiny bit longer. So if we measure this one we see by about an eighth of an inch or so it is a longer pen and it is a noticeably thinner pen. The Model SJ or short Model J similar to the LJ um, but as you can see it is shorter um, than the um, than the um, uh, standard Model J by about a quarter of an inch. Now, these pens are so similar. If you're at like a pen show and you see just a pen sitting in isolation and you don't have anything compared to and you don't have a ruler, how might you identify these pens? There's a couple of easy ways to do it. So, to tell if a pen is a Model J, it's very simple without doing any measurement. Look at the jewels on either end of the pen. The jewel on the cap and the jewel on the end of the barrel are noticeably not the same size. The one on the end of the barrel is noticeably smaller than the one on the cap. You know right away that is a Model J. Don't need to measure it against anything. Don't need to compare it against anything. That is a Model J. Now, if you want to, the Model, both the LJ and the SJ present a little bit of a problem because they both have the case where the jewels are the same size. So how can you tell the difference between an SJ and an LJ if you just are holding a pen you have nothing to compare it to, uh, in a, no ruler, etc. So one easy way of doing that is to look at the distance between the end of the lever and the end of the barrel. If the distance between the end of the lever and the end of the barrel is noticeably shorter than the length of the lever itself, then it is a Model SJ. If the distance between the end of the lever and the end of the barrel is roughly the same as the lever itself, then you know you have an LJ. So you can see the difference here. If I line up the levers, the distance between the end of the lever and the end of the barrel considerably longer in the LJ than in the SJ. And particularly look at that distance relative to the length of the lever itself. And as you can see, this distance here is considerably shorter than the length of that lever. So that's how you can tell um, these pen, the, which pen you, uh, you're dealing with if you have it in isolation, you have nothing to compare it to. Obviously, if you go to a show, and there's a whole bo box of Esterbrook pens sitting around there. It'll be a very simple matter to lay them out and compare them and figure out, okay, what's the LJ, what's the SJ, etc. Because again, as you can see right here, um, it's actually fairly, uh, fairly, uh, fairly, uh, fairly simple just by comparing the sizes and the lengths and for uh, against each other. And again, that little trick about the the jewel uh, sizes that I showed you again will will definitely uh, get that done for you. So other than the size, they are the exact same pen. So all of these SJ and LJ pens use the standard Esterbrook interchangeable nib units, as we've talked about uh, in all of our other videos. Um, what we're dealing with here is, um, you know, again, complete standardization on Esterbrook's part. They're all sack fill, sack pens with a lever full fill that use steel Esterbrook interchangeable um, nib um, units. And of course, um, all of these pens come in the full line of Esterbrook's colors that were available. So uh, the, you basically have the standard six colors that Esterbrook offered, um, the green, the black, the copper, the gray, the red, and the blue. And as we talked about in a previous video there, particularly when you talk about the copper and the gray and the green, there are significant color variants as well. So depending on how you want to structure your collection, you may want to start going crazy and collect all the variants, uh, etc. But as I said, other than that, these pens are all identical, identical clips, identical cap bands, identical jewels, um, uh, etc. So um, really what we're talking about is a size difference when it comes uh, when it comes to uh, to these to these pens. Um,
So that will pretty much cover, I think, the, the core of Esther Book's pen lineup. Oh, I do want to show you something else uh, that was available in a lot of the pens, but it's pretty popular in the LJ. So this is an LJ that was customized for a firm. So this was Bell Telephone, had Bell System Property written on it. So this was designed for you to use in the office. And so you wouldn't steal it and take it home and had Bell System Property written on it. These are actually fairly common and widely available and pretty cool. And there are a few other sort of corporate and institutional branding logos around. Very common on the LJ as um as uh, well one other thing to point out about the lj the matching pencils for esterbrook tended to be in um i guess what i would call the lj size so here here's a esterbrook mechanical pencil um and here it is with effectively it's matching LJ pen, and as you can see, it wouldn't it wouldn't really match lengthwise with the SJ. So um, the the pen pencil sets, if you will, tended to be sort of in the LJ uh, size. The other thing that was interesting is if you look at the jewels, the jewels were different for the fountain pen and the pencil. This sort of a a, a concave as opposed to a convex tip here. So if you were feeling in your pocket and you were wanted to grab your pen or your pencil, you'd be able to do that easily. Very similar to what Lame does uh, today with the tops of uh, their pens. Um, so there you go. Well, it wouldn't be much of a video if we didn't see one of these pens right. So let's, uh, let's write with this pen. And we're going to do that right now. Okay, folks, what we're writing with here is a Esther book. Model LJ, and this has a steel type 2442 um, Falcon nib. Um, and I've said this before, this is a really, really smooth, great nib. But even if it wasn't, Esterbrook nibs are literally among the easiest nibs to sort of work on yourself. Um, they're very, very forgiving, um, and they're just kind of easy to do sort of smoothing work on yourself. So if you ever get an Esterbrook nib that doesn't quite work the way you like, this is exactly um, a great nib to, um, to uh, attempt sort of home work on. Most of them are not particularly valuable. Obviously, I went, there are some Esterbrook nibs that are quite rare. I wouldn't advise doing on, on, on one of those. But again, most Esterbrook nibs are quite moderately priced, etc. So you're not really in danger of uh, damaging anything terribly precious. But this is just a great writing nib. And like I said, even I don't even remember if I, I might have tuned this one a few years ago. I honestly don't even remember. But um, even if it wasn't, it's a fairly, a fairly easy, um, fairly easy uh, nib to tune yourself. Um, in case you're interested in this ink, this is Noodler's Heart of Darkness. This is the main black ink from Noodlers that I use. Um, I don't even own a bottle of Noodlers Black because it's just not dark. It's super, super permanent, but that's not really an issue for me. Um, well, it is not particularly black. That's my main uh, uh, quality that I want in a black ink, and this black ink is super, super black. And that's kind of why I use Heart of Darkness as opposed to Noodlers Black as my sort of go-to Noodlers Black ink. Um, anyway, I think that'll do it for this video. Um, as always, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please leave a comment, subscribe, etc. Keep those comments and thumbs up coming. And as always, until next time, have a great day. Bye-bye.